Okay, back on the bike. We're getting ready to work on the brake here. So I got the pedal mounted up on here. So now I get the mass cylinder on here and I got the brake line over here. It obviously has to be bent differently to get it to match up to where this is supposed to be. So this side's a little bit on the short side, so it's gonna have to stretch on out a little bit. I need to put some spacers between here to get things to line up square. Right now when you look at it, it's not I got an offset in it, you have to move it out a little bit, about a quarter inch to get the line up. So I was getting ready to do that. They got a couple of these washers jammed in there, so I'm going to find something over here in the junk pile to use. Pretty much what we're doing around here is using junk, so. Get a nice thick one there. Close enough. Don't have to be perfect, but. Be nice but close. Alright, so you got three and two. Feel like they're not very flat, so you have to flatten them out a little bit. And put it all up on there. And we get to make get the brake line to fit up on there too, it'd be nice. Alright. Tools. First we need to go beat these washers flat. So we do this over here on the table over here. Steel table hammer makes flat washers real quick. I'm gonna figure out how many we're gonna put on there. Looks like we need to come up with a combination that'll give us two equal stacks. So easy to take something like a flat table like right here. And just mix and match until you come up with a combination that seems to work. Looks like we're only going to use four washers. So we got two here and two here. This one's just pretty equal. Close enough for this bike. So those go on there. And there's going to be a footboard that goes through here to hold the everything square. It used to be floating around here someplace. What happened to it? And a good question. Is footboard. <clears throat> All right. So this spreads into the frame. I gotta make sure this doesn't go in too deep and bottom out in there. That looks like it's going to be too deep to me. So I'm gonna do an initial mock up here to see if it'll even fit. I think the bolt's going to be too long, but tighten it up, see what happens. It appears to tighten up, so that means we're good. all on so gotta do that. Okay now I get to swap out this screen here. It was loose anyway. Good still got an inverted flare hole underneath there, that's a good sign. 
That's kind of an important thing to have. Take the brake line, which is over here. Of course, it doesn't move. Why would it? Break the rust free a little bit. Just get closer, you might be able to see better. Maybe. So we gotta get the the rust to free up a little bit. Okay, now I gotta take that and get it to start in the master cylinder. Guess at the angle. Obviously, I'm not even close. Yep, thought I had it started. All right. Not sure what angle that thing's at. Okay, go until you tie it, back it up just enough. You can rotate it. Okay, now we got to pull this thing out. Try not to crank, kink the line anywhere. But we are going to have to give it a little bit of movement here. It has to get up here. Whatever it takes to do that, it has to happen. Okay, get up close. Stick a Phillips screwdriver in the hole of help. So we'll grab a Phillips screwdriver. Through the hole there. There you go, kind of bend it around. All right. I'm going to put the push rod in here. It's easier said than done on that. That's not going to happen very easily. There it goes. Okay, so now we're halfway in there where it belongs now. Not exactly an easy bolt in there. Okay, now we can go into bolts in there. A little blue Loctite on here. Don't forget our two washers to go on the back side. Of course we can get interrupted in the middle of all of this. Hello. Yeah, one of those two. What gear is the bike? 72. You got a Hitachi or a Presolite in there? No, There's two different versions. The Presolite I have in stock. The Hitachi, I don't think I do. Uh, depends on what uh, which one I have in stock. I have to go look all that up. I'm not sure. Um, 
yeah, I couldn't even guess at this point. I'm, I'm putting a brake on the bike. Uh, why don't you me call back in about a half hour, and I'll go take a look, and I'll see what I got. I'll be here until probably 9 o'clock. Okay, bye. All right, parse interruption. And, of course, I dropped the washer, lost the washer. I have no idea where the washer went to. You wouldn't think it had gone very far. Better someplace. But it was sitting on top. Yeah, great. And it'll probably turn up later. But I need it now. Okay, see, phone calls do interrupt what I'm doing around here. Can't go very far. Not anywhere where I can see it. But I can feel it drop behind the frame. That'd be one of those rattles that you hear, but you can't, you can't find out where it is. Kind of like the door rattling. Yeah, there's the washer. It resembles that one. Okay. Try this again. All right, where's that bolt coming out at? Or I think the bolt's coming out where it is. It's two different things. Helps get in the right spot. Okay. There's that one. bolt in here. Okay. Now I gotta bend the brake line a little bit more. Try to get some clearance. So we gotta get some clearances on here. Right now we're rubbing right here. You cannot rub on steel like that. I'll put a hole through it. And then back here through here, looks like we're pretty good back there, but we do have to get some clearance in here. So we're going to jam a screwdriver up in here. This has a little bit of bend right here, we'll probably be knocking that out. That's actually not helping us any. It looks like I got light pressure on this, but nothing can rotate. Okay, so you want to look at that like that. Washers in here. Neither one of those washers in the hole where I needed it to be. One, two, three. All right. 
sort of that on the back side to tighten up with. There's one right there. that in there. Now I can go in here and actually put a little curve in that thing. Okay. Still closer than I like. Okay, I got a big gap in there now. Okay, now we got clearance between our bracket and our line. Don't have to worry about that causing issues. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the footboard up on here. I'm gonna double check the this piece here. Got a big hole in it where it went through wrong. That's nice. Boots all junk. Nice that that all will fit up in there good. So I can take it all back off again because the boots all screwed up. Get one through the crack instead of through the mounting the hole like it's supposed to. Well, at least it fits up there now. Okay, I see the boot's got a hole on the side. You're going to do that instead of through the center hole. It doesn't like going through the center hole, it likes going through the other hole. It's in there. Okay. Let me do this another time. Okay, this time we're going to put it in there for real. Okay, how's the washer mix going? Washers feel good. Not the lines bent to fit it goes together a lot easier. Don't have to force it as much. under here sits up way high. Of course, there's a 
bigger diameter washer. It's got a big sh shoulder on here. It's bigger. This is a normal. I'm gonna find something that'll fit up through there. Okay, you gotta put something on there so it doesn't bottom out on the shoulder and the furring. Okay, that should work. <clears throat> Wind's blowing good outside. Gives it sounds effects for the video. Box full of them. Okay, this is uh, a mechanical locking nut, so it doesn't require no lock washer or anything. Actually, that probably should go on the. I'm going to keep that for the footboard. It's something more we're going under here. We'll get a regular nut for that. Sure, we got something laying around here someplace. Let us quickly get going with the used box. One thing about new hardware. I know where it is. I can find it in a few seconds. Digging through the used stuff just takes time. Time we don't always have. This bolt here is kind of important. All right. Now we tighten everything down. See how good these bolts are. It's pretty tight. Camera's in the way. Yeah, camera's out of the way. You watch out for the fender right here when you take your fingers off. Especially when something strips or breaks. Okay, it's good and tight. I'm going to tighten the back one. Just a moment. 
wrench go on there. Beat the wrench on over the nut. Okay, that's tight. I guess the tin's going on the finger. All right. Now, last thing you do is tighten up the line. Hope that's enough. Okay, then we gotta make sure we got room over here for the line to not hit on it. So we're gonna bend it a little extra. There we go. Okay. That part's done. All kinds of little things you gotta do. All right, so we got that all tightened up. You can see the gap in here we got now. The line's not hitting on that. I'm sure it's rubbing on the inside of the frame up under here. I can't even see it much as I get to it. We previously made room over there for the line above the exhaust pipe up under there. Right through here. So we're gonna just have to assume that there's clearance now because I can't even see the damn line. That's part I need to get to. So we got this nut tight here, this one's tight, I tighten the one back in there, and then we got the bottom of the footboard under here. All these are tight. Stuff's all in there about normal. I didn't check this nut here. It looks tight, but looks gonna be deceiving. It appears to be tight. It's not moving. That's a good sign. Okay, now we got a clevis pin on our uh, clevis here. Got the cotter key back in there. It's not rubbing on anything, so that's got clearance. So the next thing you do is adjust is your push rod clearance. You want to make sure the push rod is not bottomed out against the inside of the master cylinder in there. So that silver part in there is, a, is the piston, it has to go back and forth. If that's not up against the clip, the retaining clip that's in there, that means the piston's stuck. It has to return back to that. So we have to move the pedal to see how much clearance we have to the push rod. So we have a little bit of clearance. So in the real world we got about this much clearance to the push rod. And see most of that half of that's right there in the pin. So see how the pin is got a lot of clearance in that hole. That's half the clearance. The other half is in the push rod itself. So you can see how this whole thing is moving back and forth a little bit. Okay, so you, that clearance is good. You want to have some clearance inside that piston so it returns. So once you know you got that, then you can go ahead and put the boot back up onto the over around the lip right here. Like this. Kind of wiggle around. Got to kind of roll it around. Usually I use my little nose picker to do this, but see if we can do it with one hand. That's all I got right now. Let's see how good I am with my fingers. There, pretty good. So I do it with my hand. I do it with one hand. That makes it easy. The nose picker makes it easier. I don't know my nose picker. I used it someplace. It disappeared again. It belongs up in here. There it is. That's what this tool is for. So this flips up under there, under the booty, and you can wrap it around and put this in a lot easier than doing the way I just did it. So, anyway, it's in there. Okay, so, now we got to get all this stuff cleaned up. we got to put some brake fluid in here, and we got to start bleeding the line. We also need to adjust the rear brake and check it. So we got to wipe off everything up in here and make sure there's no fluid. So that we know if there's a leak, because right now it's dry. So gotta wipe all that up. Now, this leaked everything out of it, I think, on the table. So yeah, 
cylinder's kind of dry. So I go get some brake fluid too. And answer the phone. All right, we'll be back in a little bit.